In this video, I'm going to show you um, and give you examples on how to name alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And so the way I'll do this is I will uh, draw a structure, um, and then you should pause the video, try to name it, and then restart the video, and then I will go through the mental um, pathway to naming the molecule. And so here I will draw the first structure. So there's the first structure, pause the video and then uh, name it and then come back and I will go through the, um, the, the pathway to naming this molecule. Okay, so the first thing I do when I look at a molecule is I first determine what family it is. Um, because this is just carbons and hydrogen, this molecule just contains carbons and hydrogens and there's only uh, single carbon-carbon bonds, this falls into the alkane family, and so therefore the suffix of the name of this molecule is going to be ane. The next thing I do uh, when naming uh, a molecule is find the longest continuous carbon chain, and so um, what I find um, is I'll go ahead and number the carbons, I see the longest chain right there. I don't see any carbon chain any longer than that. And so this is six carbons long. And so therefore the, f the parent name of this molecule is hex because it is a six carbon um, long chain. And so this will be a hexane molecule. The final thing I need to do is uh, name and name the substituents. Um, I'll circle the substituents. I see one there. I see one up here. And I see one over here, and so I have three substituents, and all three of them are methyl groups. And so I know we're going to be uh, having a methyl uh, molecule here. However, what I have to do before I put these substituents on is, the rule is, you have to number the substituents so that the lowest number, um, that they garner the lowest number possible. And so because I numbered the carbon chain the way I did, it's possible that the other direction uh, will give me lower numbered substituents. And so let me number those carbons, one, two, three, four, five, and six, in the opposite direction. And what I'm going to do is evaluate uh, the numbers that the substituents fall on, the carbon numbers. And so looking at the red numbering, um, the 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 methyl groups fall on the second carbon, the third carbon, and the fourth carbon. <clears throat> if I number using the purple numbering uh, that I did originally, the methyl groups fall on the three carbon, the four carbon, and the five carbon. And so now I have to determine which way is the better numbering. Again, I want the numbering lowest as possible. And so the way you do that is you, you start by evaluating the lowest numbers in each pathway. Uh, in this case, it's the 3 versus the 2. And since they're different and the 2 is lower than the 3, the red numbering is the correct way to number it. And so I'll use the red numbering for numbering the substituents. And so I have three methyl groups, and they fall on the 2, 3, and 4 carbons. And so... Uh, the name of this molecule is 2, 3, 4, and since there's three of them, I need to put tri, methyl, and I'm running out of space. I jammed in the methyl group. So the name of this molecule is 2, 3, 4, trimethyl hexane. Okay, so we're going to go to a second molecule. Give me a moment to draw this one up here.
Okay, if you pause the video, let me remove that little mark there. I don't know if I did a good job of that or not. Okay. Um, pause the video. Hold on a second. Whoops, I got too many carbons on there. We're going to have to change this. That'll work. Okay, pause the video and name that molecule right there. Okay, so again, I start the questioning off the exact same way I did before, and I first ask myself, what family is this? And this molecule falls into the alkene family. And because it's an alkene, the suffix of the name, because it's a family, is the alkene, this molecule will end in the word ene. Um, it's an alkene because it's composed of carbons and hydrogens, and it has a carbon-carbon double bond in it. The second part is the, is the part that will really come out in terms of naming when we name the parent. Uh, to name the parent, we need to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the carbon-carbon double bond, and that's the trick. Um, if I numbered uh, straight across, we would see one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. The problem is it doesn't include the carbon-carbon double bond. And so that's not the correct numbering. And so let me remove those numbers. Um, and let's number it with the carbon-carbon double bond has to be included in the longest chain. And so also the carbon-carbon double bond must get the lowest number possible. And so if I numbered it incorrectly... I could number it 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The problem is on that one, the carbon-carbon double bond is on the 4 carbon. And so that would not be the correct numbering for this molecule. Instead, numbering it 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 would be the correct numbering. I found the longest carbon chain that contains the double bond, and the double bond is on the first carbon. And so the parent name here is pent, because it's five carbons long. And so when we name our molecule, it would be a pentene. Sorry about the space between the T and the E there. There is no space there. <clears throat> I also must say where the one carbon, or where the double bond is located, which is on the one carbon, and so this is one pentene the one telling us where the double bond occurs. And I know the carbon, the double bonds between the first and second carbon, but we use, the, in numbering, we use the first carbon to see the double bond, and that's the one carbon. Now all we have to do is name the substituents. Uh, there's only one substituent present. It's right here. Uh, that is an ethyl group. And so in this case, we have... It's on the 2 carbon, and so that would be 2-ethyl-1-pentene. I'll draw one more on here for our final example. So just give me a moment so I can write it up here. Okay, so there's a molecule to name. I'll give you a moment, or pause the video, uh, take a moment to name it, and then come back, and I'll go through the description on how to name it correctly. Okay, again, I'm going to start with the same format as I did before. Uh, first, identify the family. Uh, I see a carbon-carbon triple bond in there, and so I know it's part of the alkyne family, and so therefore it's going to end in a Y and E. Uh, next, I need to find the, con the longest continuous carbon chain that contains 
the carbon-carbon triple bond. Um, and we want to give the carbon-carbon triple bond the lowest number possible. Because of that, we don't really care where all the substituents are. We have several substituents on this molecule, but you don't care about where getting, giving them the lowest number possible because the rule is that the carbon-carbon triple bond uh, it must be the lowest number possible. And so um, to number that, to give it the lowest number possible, I would start on the right-hand side and number my carbons. So I numbered my carbons, one, two, three, four, and five. If I numbered the other direction, the triple bond would fall on the three carbon. Numbering this way, the triple bond falls on the two carbon. So from all this, we determine we can determine the parent name, which is pent again, because it's a five carbon chain. And we have to, we have to uh, um, include the location of the triple bond and again, yes, I know it's touching the second and third carbon, but when you number it, you give the lowest number of the, of the pairing. And so it's the two carbon where you initially see the triple bond. So there's no triple bond on the one carbon, but you see it on the two carbon, so this is two pentine. Now we just have to worry about um, uh, groups. And so in this case, uh, or substituents. So in this case, I have several substituents. I see one here here, here, and here. So there's the four groups hanging on it. So I have uh, bromo groups. I have a methyl group down here. And I have an iodo group right here. And so um, the bromo, there's two of them. So we're going to have 4, comma 5 dibromo because there's two of them. I'm going to have 5-iodo as a group, and I'm going to have 4-methyl as a group. So the numbering's already set uh, because, again, the triple bond already dictated the numbering for these carbons. Now all I have to do is put them in order. Um, I do it alphabetically, and the di is not included in the alphabet. Um, and so it's going to be a B for bromo, an I for iodo, and an M for methyl. And so the name of this guy, I'm going to jam it in here. Is going to be 4, 5, di, bromo, dash, I don't think I can fit all this in here, 5, iodo, because i comes before m, and then shoved into here, sorry about this, is going to be uh, 4, m methyl, dash, 2, pentine. So again, sorry about all that, um, but that's the name of that molecule. Again, my substituents are in alphabetical order, B, I, and then M for the substituents. The numbering is correct, and I put di on for bromo because there are two of them. Okay, that includes this video on naming alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes.